All right, so uh, I'm Joe Lowry. I didn't used to be blind, but now I am, so I need to adapt. I tried out the accessibility features in the OS, and some of them I use, but one in particular is very frustrating. It's called Typing Echo, and it's slow. Even cranked up to maximum speed, it can't keep up with my typing, and worst of all, it doesn't pronounce all the pun punctuation, and that's a killer when writing code. I wanted something that would say all the special characters and say it in a way that developers need to hear it. So I made this thing. It's called Birdsong and it plugs in between the keyboard and the computer. And I'm not getting any feedback here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Gabe? Yes. we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, it plugs in between the keyboard and the computer. It's just a bump in the wire. It says keystrokes out loud. It doesn't care what kind of computer you have or what OS you use or what your favorite edit editor is. As far as your computer knows, it's just a regular keyboard. It pronounces every keystroke, but it does it in kind of a funny way. Um, special characters like semicolon and tab are spoken as tone bursts for speed. I'm actually experimenting with bird calls. Certain combinations of special characters are also pronounced in distinctive ways. For example, when I type open paren, close paren in a function, it sounds like this. The goal is speed, 200 milliseconds per character or five characters a second. That's fast enough to keep up with typing at 60 words per minute. Oh, shut up, you stupid phone. <laughs> uh, but I don't really want to talk about this. I want to show you what I learned while making it. Um, by the way, it can be made a lot smaller. The prototype is about the size of a tennis ball, but uh, this one is about the size of a grape. It's not even, this isn't even the smallest Arduino compatible computer. So you really can make it a bump in the wire. If you ever want to intercept and modify keystrokes on USB, here's how you do it. Uh, this is an Arduino. It's a little tiny computer. It costs five or ten dollars. It's so small and simple that it doesn't even have a screen. Hello world on one of these is can you make a little yellow light blink on and off once a second. They're a lot of fun to play with and I highly recommend it. It plugs into a USB port. One of the tricks it can do is pretend to be a keyboard or pretend to be Joe, a flash drive. Um, yeah? I always lost sound. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? I can still hear you. Okay. Um, well, one of the tricks that this uh, Arduino Leonardo can do is it can pretend to be a keyboard or it can pretend to be a flash drive. You plug it in and it says to the computer, I'm a keyboard or I'm a flash drive and the computer believes it. You can see where I'm going with this, but it only has one USB port. So I needed to add a second one before I could do what I needed it to do. I need it to be both a USB host and a USB device at the same time. Uh, to do that, you basically need to add one more chip. These little Arduino computers are stackable, so you can plug in these little mezzanine boards and stack them up as high as you want to add more functionality. I needed to add a USB host controller, shown here in red. It's made by SparkPhone up in Boulder. And this gives me a place to plug in the keyboard. I can plug in the, uh, I can plug this device into the computer using the USB port at the lower left. And so now I have a small computer that has two USB connectors on it. There are two kinds of things in USB, devices and hosts. A keyboard is a device. Uh, it can only plug into a host port. The way USB works, there's always exactly one host and the host pulls all of the devices connected to it periodically and the device sends back a report. The report is very simple, it's only eight bytes. Uh, one byte reserved, followed by eight bits that encode the state of all of the shift keys on the keyboard. Control, Alt, Windows key if you're on a Windows machine, etc. This is followed by up to six uh, keystrokes that have been pressed since the last report. And that's it, that's how a USB keyboard works. 
The host polls it periodically, maybe 100 times a second, and the keyboard just sends this eight byte report. A mouse report is similar, uh, one byte reserved followed by eight bits encoding the state of all of the mouse buttons, and then followed by six bytes that tell how far the mouse has moved and in what direction since the last report. Um, here's what the code looks like. Um, it comes with its own little IDE. You can program it in C or Python. Um, you don't have to use the IDE, by the way. If you like the command line better, the little window uh, shown in black at the bottom of this IDE shows the exact commands, command line arguments that the IDE is sending to the real compiler. So uh, you, can, you can use uh, command line tools to do this if, if you like command line tools better. There are always two functions in Arduino code, one called setup and one called loop. Setup runs exactly once and loop runs over and over. So there it goes. Um, so first we include the required libraries. Um, I hope you can see this, it's maybe too small, but I'll put these slides up on the, on the Tech Confluence website afterward. Um, you just include the required libraries and then you define a few functions. Um, the C++ class for the USB host controller declares certain required functions called keyboard report parsers. Um, then you create a USB device, or you create a USB object and some USB hub objects and a USB keyboard object and a keyboard report parser object. And then you initialize the USB subsystem, which will look for any USB devices that it can find and enumerate them. Um, this is actually what makes the caps lock key on your keyboard flash briefly when you plug it in. That's the USB system enumerating the device, asking it what it is and what its capabilities are and putting it in the list. And then the very last bit of this code, you start listening for keystrokes. Um, some of the lessons that I learned the hard way, there is no documentation for the USB Host Shield 2.0 library. You just have to figure out how it works by reading the uh, example code that comes with it. Um, another lesson learned is don't try to use the USB composite device object. It doesn't work. Um, what I found works for a um, a keyboard that has a couple of USB ports on it and I've got a mouse plugged into the keyboard, that it makes sense that that would be a USB composite device, but it's not. Um, just create a, a, an individual, just create individual devices, create a USB keyboard object and a USB mouse object and it just works. If there are any hubs, uh, if you think that there are going to be any hubs between your keyboard and this device, then just insert, as, as we showed here, just insert a few USB hub statements. Um, you can insert up to seven of them, um, but each one costs a little bit of memory. So I've just inserted four here, because memory is very scarce resource on, on these Arduinos. But this'll, this'll be able to talk to a keyboard through up to four daisy-chained USB hubs just because I, insert, I, I included the line USB hub, hub one, USB hub, hub two, I included that four times. So it'll work through four hubs. Um, and keystrokes, the other thing is keystrokes are not reported as ASCII, they're reported as scan codes. For example, the escape key is scan code uh, hex zero one, meaning that it's in the upper left-hand corner of the keyboard and generally F1 on the keyboard is scan code two, uh, F2 is scan code three, et cetera. Uh, someone has pointed out to me that this uh, device that I've built here is actually a security vulnerability because when you type in passwords, yeah, it's gonna broadcast them audibly. <laughs> but um, that's it, I have been using this device to um, to work on my computer for the last few weeks. I'm still tweaking it and testing it and improving it, but um, I, I needed a solution and so I made one. And that's it. Let me stop sharing the screen.
and go back to Gabe. Awesome. That seems really neat. Uh, do you want to play some more of the, um, just what it sounds like? Is that feasible? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not really set up to demo it, but uh, let me just pull up. Uh, yeah, here we are. Um, here's a fun one. Uh, let's see if you can hear it. That uh, was a little drip sound. Um, I didn't get it. Yeah, I couldn't quite hear it either. Didn't hear okay. it. Yeah, I'm I'm getting um, I, I'm getting the sound through my speakers here, but uh, I okay. don't have the device itself plugged into um, my audio here. So when when I <laughs> uh, I can hear it, but you probably can't hear it. So I'm experimenting with different bird calls and uh, different synthesized sounds. But uh, so far, the, the best one that I have is that uh, uh, rim shot sound for paired uh, parentheses. Is that way when I type, when I type uh, uh, open paren, close paren, um, I get a, a set of sounds that kind of suggests, um, kind of suggests the, the character of the keys that I've just typed. So that's, uh, that's, what I'm, that's where I'm trying to go with this. That's super cool. Uh, questions? Are there hey, any Joe. like, oh, sorry. You go first. Okay. Hey, Joe, um, yeah. I was wondering how you put this presentation together. Uh, how do you handle images? I saw that you had a bunch of images on your, on your presentation. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on a Mac and I'm using Keynote which is essentially a PowerPoint clone. Um, I discovered last night that I could actually paste the sounds directly into my, my presentation. But uh, when I did that, they played automatically uh, every time the screen came up and I didn't want that to happen. So I, I, I spent a while Googling, trying to figure out how to put a sound into a PowerPoint or Keynote uh, file uh, in such a way that it gives me a button that I could click on, but I don't have to actually, uh, it doesn't play automatically when the slide comes up. It, does, it doesn't play until I want it so to play. When you, so it plays a sound whenever you, you copy or whenever you paste? Um, no, it, it, plays a, it plays the sound when, this, when the slide appears. So it just goes like this. And I didn't want it to do that okay. when the slide appeared. I wanted it to do it only when I click on the button that appears on the slide. But I couldn't find a way to do that. It's, it seems to be impossible. <laughs> but uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this with a bunch of USB boards is because it necessitates no um, modifications to the operating system or the computer. As far as the computer is concerned, this is just a keyboard. And uh, so it, it's, it will work in high security environments, which is the kind of environment that I've worked in uh, where they will not allow you to install software on the computer or make, um, make changes to the OS. This, um, this just lies to the computer and says, I'm a keyboard. And yes, that is a security hole that you could drive a truck through. <laughs> Well, how so, do you how do you um, put screenshots in your? How do you handle images, though? Oh, I, um, yeah. The the images I just uh, took with my phone, and um, I just cut and paste an, an image. I well, I if I've got the image, uh, if I can display the image in some way, I just uh, copy and then paste right into um, the PowerPoint slide, and it it comes right up. Um, I didn't have any problem with that. I can, I can bring it up in um, editing mode and show you what, what it looks like for me. Uh, where's the navigator? Yeah. So I, can j I just pasted this image straight into the PowerPoint you, file. You don't have your uh, screen shared anymore, Joe. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah. Um, I... I just I can just paste an image right in, and it uh, it gives me a resizable image that I can then um, you know make any size that I want. And I just I just took this picture on my phone, 
um, mm. out, outside in the, in the sunlight, um, actually on a cloudy day, so it didn't give me any shadows. And I put a piece of paper behind it for a, a background so it wasn't distracting. I just wanted you to be able to see kind of what it looks like with a USB cable in the foreground so you can uh, know exactly how, how large it is. So what was your question, Alex? Oh, um, yes, it was a really small question, which is that, did you find any bird songs that have kind of like a call and response feature that you can divide like the rim shot for the parentheses? That's a good idea. Um, oh, that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, thank you, Alex. That's, that is an excellent idea. Um, I, I have to crop each of the, uh, or trim each of the sound files down to only a fifth of a second. So I have a look, because, because the MP3 player on the top of this stack here doesn't actually, uh, can't actually play um, more than one clip at a time. So I don't want the clips to, I don't want the sound clips to be longer than a normal keystroke so that they won't pile up and, and, uh, and bog down my typing. But um, yeah, call and response, bird call, that is a really good idea. Um, may I steal that idea? Oh yeah, definitely. I was also trying to think of bird songs I was really familiar with, like the chickadee sound is like chickadee dee dee. You could do chicka and then maybe dee 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 for the end. That one I already figured out. And <laughs> I got, yeah, I got one of those. And uh, warbler and uh, nuthatch because they they live around my house, and I was a, the, the, I recognized the bird calls when I found them. The Cornell Library of Ornithology is the best place in the world to look for bird calls. That's so cool. You're going to be so good at bird watching. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just needed something that I can work because it's, it's, uh, well, that's why this has been going slowly is because it's, it's hard to see the screen and it's hard to work when you can't see the screen. I, I just needed a tool and the built-in ones in the OS weren't, weren't working for me because it was just too slow, even cranked up to maximum speed. So I made this. Nice. But uh, that, the, the one that I showed you with, um, that was the size of a grape, um, I still, yeah, I'm still sh uh, showing. Uh, that's not even the smallest, that's not even how small this can get you can actually make this thing smaller than a sugar cube. So imagine all the, all the uh, mischief you could get up to in a high security office if you can eavesdrop on and modify on the fly uh, anything going through a USB port. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a giant security vulnerability. <laughs> and it's a giant security vulnerability that costs $15. Heck yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. All right, I'm gonna try the applause one more time here. Unmute everyone. Oh, thank you.